Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to uh, compare and contrast game theory, non-cooperative game theory and cooperative game theory. Uh, maybe I should start with uh, saying the main message of this episode, which is, uh, well, both of those are approaches and uh, it's a matter of choice. Uh, I mean, you can uh, model a strategic interaction as a cooperative game or as a non-cooperative way. Uh, both would probably work. Both has advantages and disadvantages, but some environments are more, how should I say, um, appropriate for a cooperative game approach and others are more appropriate for non-cooperative approach. Or depending on the questions you're tackling, you may prefer one method over the other. All right, so uh, if you remember our example, my favorite example in the previous episode, let me very briefly go over that again. So there are three kids uh, with $6, $4, and $3. Um, they don't care about the money they have. They want to buy ice cream. And there are three tubs of ice cream, the small 500 gram, medium 750 gram, and large 1000 gram. And these are the price of those ice cream tubs. And so as you see, they cannot, nobody, no player can buy ice cream alone. So they have to pull in their resources and then they need to decide how to split, uh, you know, who is going to get how much. Well, so we can analyze this problem uh, with cooperative approach and also with non-cooperative approach. Well, the thing is, uh, what do we need for, you know, uh, for these two different approaches? Well, in general, uh, the, 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 the sort of a difference between non-cooperative and cooperative game theory, I'm going to come to that question that I just posed, but the, the main sort of difference between non-cooperative and cooperative game theory is that uh, players, we assume, that are not able to make binding agreements in a non-cooperative uh, environment. Um, however, in a cooperative environment, we usually um, assume that players are able to make binding agreements, although those agreements are not described in, in, the, uh, in the description of the strategic environment. So here, if these three guys, kids, are friends, right, uh, they can clearly write some binding contract uh, between each other. It's like, you know, if you don't do that, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to talk to you for, I don't know, for some time. So you see what I mean? So the, those uh, binding agreements. So what is binding agreement? Well, there are agreements where if somebody violates, there's going to be some monetary or sort of emotional penalty. Right. So here, maybe the agreements are not going to be monetary, are not going to involve monetary penalties, but they may involve some emotional, uh, psychological uh, sort of penalty. All right. Um, so um, <clears throat> that kind of means if you are analyzing a sort of a strategic environment between players who know one another, who already have some history, and who will have probably some future together, well, then cooperative approach would make more sense, all right? But again, you can sort of analyze this environment with a non-cooperative approach and by specifying those uh, code and code potential agreements that they can also decide in, you know, uh, between each other. Well, other than that, uh, sort of the, again, a general uh, distinction between these two approaches is that the uh, main ingredient of um, cooperative approach is a, a group of players, which are called coalitions. Um, so you can see cooperative approach to game theory as a competition uh, or game between coalitions. However, in non-cooperative approach, um, we do not look at groups uh, of players. Uh, we just look each individual separately, all right? Well, once again, why? players are not able to form coalitions in non-cooperative approach? Well, as I said, depending on the strategic environment, maybe there is no way uh, those players can enforce uh, coalitions uh, uh, because they don't know each other, they don't have any history, or they don't have any future. You see what I mean? So, um, what else? I think the main distinction uh, between cooperative and uh, non-cooperative approach to game theory is that the cooperative game theory 
takes the strategic environment or the game as kind of a black box, all right? It says, look, those guys are going to play some game, all right? It's a strategic environment because one guy's decision is not enough to determine his own payoff. The other's decision also matters, all right? So it's a strategic environment and they're playing some game. But the thing is, I'm not going to explain uh, as a modeler, I'm not going to explain what are the actions, strategies, the timing, etc. Well, why? Well, because I don't know. I mean, if you go back to this example, all right, so how these three guys are going to really play this game? I mean, I, I believe I, I picked this example because, I mean, at least I uh, hadn't been this situation many times with my friends. It's like, how do you really play this game? I mean, do we really have a clear timing like we have in chess? No, I mean, probably they just get together. They say, well, let's pool our money, right? It, it makes the most sense. So, I mean, forget about how to form a coalition, but let's say we all want to get together and then so we can buy 1000 gram uh, ice cream. But the question is, how are we going to split this? Are we going to split it equally or should we split it, um, you know, whoever has the highest money and so he or she should get uh, the biggest portion. But how big is the biggest portion? You see what I mean? So how are they going to determine this? Are they going to negotiate? Are they going to, you know, write some numbers on a piece of paper and then randomly draw it? So what are the rules of the game that they're going to be playing? Well, we don't know. The thing is, do we want to model this? Well. That depends on the questions you want to tackle, right? So if you don't really care about the specifics of the game and only care about what should be the outcome, I mean, eventually they're gonna go to the store, buy the ice cream and split it. The question is, what is that outcome? What is this optimal outcome? So you don't really care, again, what's going on in the black box. You just look at the outcome of this black box. So, for that reason, uh, cooperative game theory makes much more sense. But sometimes, oh, the non-cooperative game theory, however, uh, aims to open up this box, all right? It says, well, look, I need to know what's going on in this box, all right? What are the strategies, actions, the timings, etc.? And so, I need to open this box and explain what's going on inside. Well, Again, it depends on what type of questions you're tackling. So if you are, for example, analyzing, you know, firms competing with each other, and if you would like to answer questions like how firms change their prices or how they determine their quantities or how their quantities change, you know, depending on the other guy's quantities, well, then the strategies, the timing of the game, all that matters because you are tackling the specifics of the strategic environment. You're not only looking at the outcome, right? So in that instances, a uh, non-cooperative approach makes, would make more sense. You see what I mean? Um, what else? In that sense, I think, uh, the cooperative game theory is relatively, and I'm, I'm, I'm using these terms uh, very loosely, um, so, uh, Cooperative game theory is more prescriptive or normative in comparison to non-cooperative game theory. And therefore, a non-cooperative game theory is more descriptive or more positive. It's like how players should play, how they really play it, or, you know, uh, how they should be playing it. However, the cooperative game theory is, doesn't really care about the, uh, you know, the description of the game. It's just, well, whatever or however they play, the outcome should be this. Because, I mean, under those circumstances, right, uh, it seems like the fairest uh, outcome and the most optimal uh, outcome are, are those and these. And so, you see what I mean? Um, so, once again... Um, when I go back to my original question is like, uh, you know, when do we use cooperative game uh, theory or when do we use non-cooperative game theory? Once again, we can model the same strategic environment under either approaches, all right? Um, obviously, that depends on what type of questions you're interested in. And clearly, in some environments are more suitable to cooperative game theory. For example, think of, uh, you know, bargaining situations. So, if you remember our 
uh, earlier uh, lectures on Rubinstein's alternating offer bargaining game. I think most of you guys are going to say, there's no way. I mean, you probably have negotiated with lots of stuff with many sellers or, and or buyers. And you would probably say, I have never ever negotiated in this fashion. It's like, I'm going to wait and then you will make an offer and then I'm going to reply. Well, the thing is the timing of the game really endogenous is like, you know, I just make an offer whenever I want to make an offer. You see what I mean? So the description of the strategies, actions, the timing is, is probably very, very crucial. Um, and so you may say, I don't really care about what's going on in this box, in this, in this game. I just want to know the outcome. But as I said, it depends on um, your questions you're tackling. Maybe you want to answer questions like, what is the best uh, initial offer? Or who should make the initial offer? If you make an initial offer, is it going to hurt you or benefit you? Uh, or if you are going to make concessions, what should be the rate of concessions? You see what I mean? So if you are aiming to make such um, um, comparative static analysis and or answer questions which are related to the details of the strategic environment, then non-cooperative approach would make more sense. Um, again, it's like this is not a clear, maybe a distinction between cooperative and non-cooperative approach. In many instances, there is no clear cut uh, difference. Uh, but sort of uh, uh, this is uh, my way of differentiating these two approaches. And I hope it was clear.